Hey everybody, Don with Brazier Toneworks and thanks for watching. Today's video is all about switches, not the uh, standard uh, toggle switch or five-way or three-way selector switch. This is going to deal with the small mini switches, the push-pull pots uh, that have the switch built onto them. Just going to kind of go over the different varieties of these and explain how these work. So for those of you who are trying to uh, kind of come up with your own wiring schemes or just trying to get a better understanding of how these things work and how the inside of your guitar works. So hopefully this video is for you. So let's get started. Okay, the first switch is a single pull, single throw, or what's known as an SPST. There's two different flavors. You can have a momentary or you can have a permanent switch. We'll talk about the difference in a second. There's two lugs on the back of this. It's very simple to wire up. The switch itself can be a toggle switch. It can be a slider. It can be a button that you push up and down. All of those are going to work identical. Now, with the two lugs on the bottom of the switch, it makes it very easy to wire up. In this case, I have the red going to be our input, the green is going to be our output. All the switch is really doing is just interrupting the signal on, a, on an SPST type of switch. All it's doing is it's either allowing that signal to continue or it's shutting it off. Now, if you think about it from a momentary perspective, if you had a little push button on your guitar and you push it in, you're going to engage that switch. So looking at the bottom two pictures, when the switch is off, the signal is flowing between the two lugs. When you engage the switch, you're going to shut that signal off from the bottom lug, thereby canceling the signal out. This is how guys like Buckethead and others will get that very staccato output out of their guitar by simply pushing this button. It cuts the signal, re-engages the signal. So that's basically how an SPST switch works. You can also have a permanent SPST, which is when you would flick the lever off, you basically would turn off the signal completely. If you turned it back on, you would have that signal re-engaged, much like a light switch in your house. Now the next switch is very similar. It's a single pull double throw, or what's known as an SPDT switch. And the difference here, if you look, you've got our common wire coming in. So think about that as our input coming into the black. And we have a choice. We can either go out the red or we can go out the green, depending on which way we move that switch. Again, it can be a lever, it can be a, a slider, it actually can be a push button up and down. So when the switch is down, we would have, as I show on the bottom, you'd have the top two lugs engaged. When the switch is up, you would have the bottom two lugs engaged. That's how you'd have the signal be able to be differentiated going out the red or going out the green. Making things more interesting is the double pull, double throw switch, which is the DPDT uh, variety. Basically, if you think about it, it's two single pull switches just put next to each other. So again, we've got the common coming in, and we've got the red as an option, and we've got the green, but it's done in pairs. Meaning that if, again, I turn the switch down, both sets of the top lugs are going to be activated. If I turn the switch up, I'm going to have the bottom two lugs activated, or the ones in green here. So you can hopefully start to see that you have some wiring options. When that switch goes up, you can engage the top, you can engage the bottom if it goes down, and you can have it be independent. You can have the left side uh, wired completely foreign or opposite from the right side. You have some variety there. Now, the DPDT switch is probably the most common that people work on because it is the one that's on the bottom of a push-pull pot. It's exactly the same setup we just went over. You've got the middle row is your common input, and then you have your choices. I either want to go out the red side or I want to go out the green side. Looking on the bottom, you can, again, see how the switch and those lugs are going to be configured or how they're going to react to each other when you have the switch in the up position or if you have the switch in the down position. Now, one of the things that you do want to do is verify how your switch operates. There are some switch manufacturers out there who have the switch operating slightly different than what I show here, meaning that when the switch is up, the different poles or lugs would be active than maybe what you're thinking they should be. It's very simple. Just hook a multimeter up to the common lug in the center and then to one of the lugs on the top or the bottom turn the switch on and off, figure out which one is live, depending on where that switch position is, then you know what's going on. What I'm showing you here is a common representation, but again, some manufacturers do do their lugging and their uh, switching a little bit different, so just verify. 
Now, a couple of years ago, Fender came out with what's known as the S1 switch. It's basically four single-pull, double-throw switches arranged on a circuit board on the bottom of a pot that has a switch on it that when it's active, it basically activates all of these switches, either on or they're off. So you have, again, some unique varieties of wiring that you can do with it. Shown here, basically I have the common coming in where I have the black uh, shown, and then when the switch is in a down position, you can see the red lugs, the one on the left there, those are the ones that become active. When the switch is on the up position or off, if you will, you would have the blue ones engaged. And again, you can mix and match these uh, depending on your exact wiring needs. So again, this is a very interesting switch that you can put in there. I don't really find it very uh, aesthetic on a Les Paul or those type of guitars. Fender basically made it so that it looks the best on their Stratocaster with that little button on top that gets pushed in. But uh, you can apply it to other types of guitars if you want to. It's not just for a Stratocaster. Now, there are some alternative DPDT switches, and these actually are designed with a, a toggle in mind, and you have three positions. You have the up, the center, and the bottom. Think of like a Les Paul type guitar. It's similar to that um, in that you can have the neck pickup, the neck and the bridge, or just the bridge. The wiring concept goes exactly the same with an on, on, on type of uh, switch. The other alternative is an on-off on switch, meaning that when you would move to the neck pickup, again, using our Les Paul example, you'd have the neck pickup. When you would move it to the middle, you'd get neither. It's a completely off type of switch. Then if you moved it down towards the bridge side, you would actually get the bridge pickup. So you have the two varieties. You have an on-on-on, or you have an on-off-on. Now, again, the reason I'm saying this is if you're out there buying switches, make sure you read all of the specs on it to make sure you're getting what you need, whether you just want a, a single on-off type switch or lever switch, or do you want one with the three positions so that you can uh, do some of these other types of wiring. Now, to show you some practical examples of how these switches are used, here's a classic splitting our humbucker into a uh, single coil if it's in one position or going back to a humbucker if it's in another. We have our two coils tapped together so they are uh, the red and the white in this particular example coming into the common of the switch. We have one portion grounded and we have the other portion have nothing. Therefore the coil tap itself doesn't get short it out and therefore you have the full humbucker when it's shorted out you're splitting off those that bottom coil and therefore you just have a single coil so you can see exactly on the bottom what's happening when the switch is in one position you've got the humbucker when it's in the other the leads are grounded and you basically now have a single coil pickup now some guys want to take their pickups and put them in and out of phase with each other uh, to get that Jimmy Page or Brian May kind of thin, whispery, hollow type of effect. And you do that again with a DPDT switch. If you'll notice here, the pickups are wired to the bottom half of the switch. Um, and then the output is basically what we referred to earlier as our common. But you'll notice how they're as a, at a cross. And if you think about how that switch works based on what we talked about, you'll understand what happens. Looking on the bottom, you can see the output when the switch is in the up position. The negative side is coming out the left. The positive is coming out the right. When that switch goes into the down position, the output is now coming out the left-hand side, and the negative is coming out the right. All right, well, there you go. Hopefully this was a pretty simple explanation as to some of the components that you have in your guitar. I want you guys to understand exactly how the signal flows from lug to lug or component to component. So when you're actually taking it apart and you're doing your wiring and you want to try something unique or whatever, you actually have the foundation to understand, well, this is how the signal is going to flow. And you can come up with your own kind of creative ways of, of wiring up your guitar. As always, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or thoughts, please email me at brasiatoneworks at gmail.com. And remember, tone, it's not just a knob, it's sound advice.